The uh, next talk is from Nima uh, Sanchabi, and he's uh, showing how to solve this question efficiently using um, node centrality measures. Yeah, hello everyone. So here I want to present what I've done with, the, with this problem of uh, link prediction of semantic network of science. I did a bunch of experiments and my methodology was mostly using handcrafted features. So I tried to focus more on um, data and explore it at least uh, good visually and uh, um, however I could. So, okay, uh, I think everyone give an introduction about the problem set, but uh, I will go very fast over the problem and data set and the graph. So the problem uh, is predicting uh, scientific uh, uh, research trend. So the, the, the data set that uh, is used uh, um, is just uh, a few concepts that have been uh, recognized in uh, journal papers and whenever they co-appear together in a paper we call it emerge so we call it a new trend in fact like here we have object recognition and machine learning or quantum convolutional neural networks and, and different things um, and why is it important uh, because it's important for any researcher in academia that needs to plan ahead, also in industry, uh, especially high tech industry, they need to know about upcoming trends uh, and technologies to just uh, be prepared and invest on the resources. Uh, okay, the network is huge. Uh, so it has uh, in 2017, uh, at about 7 million edges. This is just a very a small subsample and show you how these concepts uh, merge together and go up here in these papers. And uh, they grow exponentially. Uh, in some days, like in 2000, a day in 2016, about 25,000 of these um, concepts uh, has appeared in the network, 25,000, a very high number. Uh, okay, the data set, uh, very uh, briefly on data set, it has 65,000 nodes and uh, finally reached uh, 7 million edges. Uh, how it sample from this data set, we uh, it tried to just sample randomly if, uh, because it's uh, very unbalanced that there are just a few positive cases. Uh, we might just upsample it and uh, to have just more uh, positive uh, samples for training. And uh, also uh, there was a method uh, for skipping some of the to filter in some of the nodes that have very few, the, the very small degree. Uh, I use the uh, cutoff degree of one, so I just skip the, uh, I almost use everything, but uh, the nodes that have degree of zero. Um, so I used uh, node centrality measures, and these are uh, a few of them, a few of the very popular ones. And one of the criteria is computation cost. So you can see uh, some uh, features like betweenness are very, very expensive to compute. So they're not practical. And we have also here degree degrees, actually the cheapest one to compute. And we have eigenvector. Eigenvector, uh, I think it's like a feature that we've used uh, a degree of neighbors in some sense, they're similar. And I think degree of neighbors was better. So from here, we just use degree and I will show you the rest of the features that we use. So we use degree. This is how you can calculate it. 
And we use degree of neighbors, which is basically the total uh, degree of all the connections of a node. Um, and here we have the mutual neighbor. The mutual neighbor, uh, the computation of mutual neighbor needs the a square of adjacency matrix. And uh, computing the a square of adjacency matrix is very expensive. So it needs a lot of RAM. If your graph or number of samples grow, uh, that matrix will finally crash uh, the process. So what I've done here for calculating the features was uh, just computing that uh, square of adjacency matrix in section by section. So first I source the pairs, then I uh, 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 compute uh, a subsection, uh, extract the features from the subsection, delete it from the memory and uh, for the next section. And with, uh, with this approach, you can do about like 10 million, uh, you can uh, easily compute 10 million uh, features on laptop. Okay, the models are, uh, I just used uh, two basic models. Uh, one, the default that been, has been used in the competition, uh, an MLP with uh, features that been sampled in the year, uh, in three years. Uh, uh, so I, I also, uh, also used uh, the, the other model that I used was an LSTM. So I used the same features, but it's stacked uh, behind each other. Uh, I have also experimented with different combination of uh, years. So it, it, uh, here you, are, you can see three years. I've used like one, two, three to seven years and also between years, like every six months. And uh, one observation here was that uh, using very small, some uh, very small, time interval, just add noise to the model. So you are better to just stick with this uh, every year. So three or four samples is the, gives you the optimum results. And uh, the last function that I use was binary cross entropy and also the metric is that you see uh, because our data set is uh, hugely unbalanced. Uh, Okay, for evaluation, so we train uh, with the data from three years before and we evalu evaluated uh, the solution of evaluation are in three years after. So from uh, the training data till the solution of evaluation, there's six years gap. Um, okay, most important features, the, the spoiler alert. Uh, the most important feature is degree, obviously. Uh, I have experimented on different combinations. So uh, degree after that degree of neighbors on its own is the most important and then mutual neighbors. But uh, interestingly, the combinations uh, are different. So you might uh, expect that degree and degree of neighbors give you the better per best performance. But in fact, these two give you a better performance that you can see here. Uh, these two, yeah, here. Okay, and actually using the all the features uh, improved uh, the performance slightly. So it's really better to use only degree or degree and mutual neighbors. Uh, and uh, let's wrap it up. Uh, the features that we use, the lowest setting is only using two degrees in one year. It still give you a good performance. And the most expensive one uh, could be using all the five features. I have also used eigenvectors, so six features, but it didn't improve anything. Um, so five features in three years or more is the most expensive and it uh, finally Im might improve about 2% from degree 
only degree to using everything uh, on, on an LSTM. Um, features are the features that we have just that the entire data set are hugely skewed to write. So they, uh, they have a lot of uh, small uh, values like degrees have a lot of a small, like they start from zero. If you don't filter them, they have a lot of zero and one and a lot fewer uh, of those large degrees. It's not good for training. Uh, and so if we scale them with uh, mean, ma uh, mean max scaling between zero and one, it's that's not the best option. So uh, what I've used here is uh, a power transform uh, the power transform of EO Johnson. Uh, it uh, makes your data distribution a mere a bit like normal with uh, average of zero and uh, the variance of one. And it helps a bit about like half a percent uh, in AUC. Another experiment that I've uh, done uh, was just using the model in all the years. So training in like 2000, predicting 2003 and so on. Training still finally training in uh, 2014 and predicting 2017 here. Um, and you can see that the uh, performance of the model improved. Uh, an interpretation is that in the previous years we had the network was smaller and we had a lot of zero features. Like here you have almost a uh, score equal to random guess. But as the network grows, we are gonna have more sa positive samples and at the same time, less zero samples. Zero samples doesn't add any information to the model. Okay. Another experiment was on different horizons. So the, base, the default horizon that this competition started on was three years. So if you, you use a smaller horizon, like, like two years or one year, uh, obviously you're gonna have better AUC and the longer the horizon, the more uh, difficult to uh, predict the future. Uh, here I have a horizon of uh, eight years. And let's uh, look closer to the data distributions because it's useful when you uh, want to use handcrafted features. So this is a bivariate KDE on only degrees. So this is the degree of node one on each pair. This is the node degree one and degree two. And you can see that it's concentrated uh, around zero. Uh, and also another interesting thing is that it has two hands, like it doesn't grow here. Not both the degrees can be lodged together. It can be only one of them. Uh, but most of them are here uh, around zero. So they are young, young uh, nodes that hasn't started to absorb connections and the olders are just going this way. And here is even more interesting in the previous diagram, we had the, uh, a kernel density. Here we have the actual- just a, Sorry, just a quick info. Um, maybe um, let's uh, stop uh, soon in, in one minute or so, then we still have time for some questions. Thanks. Okay. Here, uh, sorry, where's the question? No, I mean, uh, the, uh, the time is nearly up. So uh, maybe let's uh, come at, um, to an to a end. Uh, then there's still some time for, uh, for a few questions. Okay. Thanks. So can I only explain this and- Yes, sure, no? uh, explain this and then yeah, that's fine. Okay. So uh, here is just a bit interesting here with uh, these lines that appear here. Uh, so here we have a node that is, is very big. Uh, it has a large degree, 
And this line happened, uh, is created here because the node is connected to any other node around it. But if you look at the number two, this node has the same degree, large degree, but it's not connected to anything and it has a very nice interpretation. It means this one is a new trend. Uh, it has large degree and it's still active. It's still connecting to others. This one is an old trend. So it has reached to this level and it had to stop growing and it's not active anymore. And yeah, so I had everything here and okay, I think my time is over, but this one, this part was the most interesting part. <laughs> okay, sh how should I proceed here? Sorry? Uh, should I explain this or stop? Because this um, one is interesting, very interesting. So, uh, uh, mm, okay, if, if you think this is the most interesting, uh, if you can uh, finish it in one minute, then, then we still have time. Okay, okay. So what we've done in this competition was predicting edges that connect and have on at least one edge, uh, sorry, one connection. I tried to predict more strong connections so that trend is appearing in more than one paper, like in three papers. So that's the a stronger, a stronger connection. Uh, it's gonna uh, be a more meaningful trend and gonna last more. And surprisingly, uh, when you try to predict uh, Strong connection, it gives you a very higher uh, score. So I reached a score of 0 0.96 to predict connections with three or more than three connections, edges with three or more than uh, three connections. Okay, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Wow, this was really, really interesting. The last point that you just mentioned, um, I was thinking about something related for quite some time. Uh, can you predict not only those that will be connected, but that will be strongly connected? And I'm very surprised that you show indication that the quality becomes better. That's really cool. Um, okay. Uh, maybe uh, one, one question uh, that came up uh, was, uh, you, you sorted your features uh, by usefulness and uh, versus computation time. Uh, so I wonder whether one can design with ideas that you have, or maybe in an automated way, the most efficient uh, feature. So how could you, what could be the, the metric to get the most efficient feature? Because you showed that some feature, yeah, exactly. And now okay. combine this information with the area under the curve in a neural network. How, uh, maybe one can make a metric and then get the most efficient feature to predict mm -hmm. yeah okay you, you probably can uh, 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 define it as the computation cost so this feature is very cheap to compute at the same time gives the highest score on its own so yeah degree mm -hmm. uh, considering these uh, these two yes. criteria, yeah, uh, uh, here, yes, degree. Degree on its own, only on a, uh, a multi-layer perceptron can mm -hmm. achieve this um, yeah. score. That's interesting. So th this will probably one, uh, be one of the uh, yeah, uh, leading candidates for this new metric. That's really interesting. Uh, yeah, I think we run out of time. Thanks very much uh, for this contribution. It was very interesting, especially the last part. Uh, let's definitely stay in touch.